Okay. <clears throat> All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's the August 15th meeting of the Board of Sewer Commissioners. I'd like to call the meeting to order. And we'll have a roll call. <coughs> Sorry, Sandy Slavin. And Donna Bronk is here. She just does an issue. <coughs> Jim Giberti. We have minutes from the meeting of August 1st. I have reviewed the August 1st minutes and find them in order. I make a motion to accept the August 1st, 2019 minutes. Okay, well, I will second it. Oh, we're waiting for her. Yeah. I mean, I'll just wait for her to take a vote on it because she'll be right back. Now we have sewer business. We have contracts for Beta, Titan, and GHD. That is correct, yes. Beta is a phase two baseline assessment an alternative assessment, effluence force main alternative assessment. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, this is part of the SNEP grant and our part of the contribution in kind and, um, and uh, matching funds. And I believe the contract's for approximately $40,000, which is our contribution. So we're gonna pay 40,000 to, to Bader and the balance will be paid by the SNEP grant through the Buzzers Bay Coalition. This was voted on at town meeting to move the money for these for the funds for this. So the funds are available through the town meeting uh, article that talks about both GHD and Bader. Okay. Any comments on this, this the G Beta contract? Just to confirm, it's forty-one thousand two hundred seventy-seven dollars and fifty-seven cents. Is that the correct amount? That is the correct amount. I make a motion we approve. I second it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Donna, we're, I'm going to back up to the minutes for one second. Certainly. And Sandy made a motion to accept them as presented. I second that motion too. I read them. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Three zero zero. Now uh, we have Titan Roofing. Is this for the repairs? To the, uh, the roofs at the plant, yes. You're correct, Mr. Chairman. Uh, again, it was a capital improvement approved at uh, town meeting. The town meeting article, I believe, was $215,000. And the cost of this contract is 180000 and some change. How many bidders did we have? You got 188 I think we had about four or five bidders. Okay. With, were, were these folks the lowest or were they? Correct, they're the lowest. Okay. Titan Roofing, and where are these Titan, titan Roofing from? Much, I, I believe it's Worcester or something. They're, they're a distance away. And it's the th Springfield. The three, it's three buildings, right? That's yes. correct. I have a motion. I make a motion that we accept the uh, Titan Roofing proposal. I second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Three zero zero. GHD, conceptual design of the Wareham Water Pollution Control Facility expansion. Again, this is under the SNEP grant. Uh, the, the bulk of this, uh, the contract with GHD will paid for, be paid for through the SNEP grant with the Buzzards Bay Coalition. Our contribution was $39,830.40, and that's the amount of this contract. Again, that was funded at town meeting. I make a motion to accept the uh the GH, the GHD Incorporated contract as submitted. I'm sorry, I'm still looking for the dollar amount. It's in, the, it's in the back, it's in the back. 
Let me find it and see if I can find it. I'm sorry, it's 39,000. 830 $830.40. 830. Yeah, it's back here somewhere. It's in the very 40. page two of the back document. They put okay. that in small letters. Exhibit A. Exhibit A. Yeah, it's very small. Yeah, I, it's, I, it's, I did see that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I will second this. All in favor? Aye. Three zero zero. Okay. <clears throat> Odor update, where were we with that? Have we? Um, flows have slowed down some. It's, we only did a million gallons last month, um, which of course we used to average between seven and eight, 100,000 gallons. So the flow is starting to subside. So we're seeing a trend down with 1 million point oh one gallons last month. Uh, for the month of July and, and August is looking as good as the trending down. So we're able to keep the basin empty. So we're going to continue on that. But the long term plans for odors, Mr. Uh, Chairman, um, GHD is here this evening to talk about some grant, uh, actually some SRF funding we're looking for to address this on a long term. So I think the long term solution is a solution. The short term, we are doing what we're doing. We're emptying the basin. Um, we also have our pump stations. We have the uh, uh, each pump station talking to one another um, so we can control or, or damper the flow to the plant. So those are the things that we've done and continue to do, but when the flow is excessive of what we can handle, it just it leaves very little alternatives. So the long term, I think beta, I mean, uh, so I'm sorry, uh, GHD will talk about in tonight's presentation. He's not gonna talk just about close spins? No, close spins we talked about, but it's, I find they're more expensive than I thought, so. Also, to, we've had, we we're waiting for the contractor to come in, but we're putting the misters back in line. We haven't used them. I don't know what that long term is going to be, but we are repairing them. It's very inexpensive, about seven thousand. We'll repair them and have them ready to go. Well, how have the complaints been recently? Because I mean, I've been I, I've been reading, you know, a lot of com complaints, and I'm I'm, I'm just. I mean, we've thrown so much money at this, Mr. Chairman. Sorry. We've thrown so much money at it, and I, I, I don't have a problem if we're going to fix the problem, but I have a problem just throwing money out the window all the time, and, and the problem doesn't seem to be getting any better. Well, the problem is structural. So we had talked about four years ago, three years ago, I'm not so sure about putting a $15 million investment into primary clarifiers to remove the solids and to be able to uh, metabolize or to handle the flow that was shot down. So there's a, the, the problem I find is that the permanent solutions are expensive. You'll hear one tonight that's gonna to cost approximately 10 million. So those are the kind of numbers that we just freak out of. And so we say, well, let's just do something short term. Can you spend less money? So we spend less money trying to address some of the issues and none of them been long term. So we need to talk about the long terms. And there's a report out there that talks about that in the long term primary clarifiers, they're out there. In the short term, you can do this. In the immediate, you can, and, you know, the intermediate, you can do this. And so we're trying to accomplish those. But, and, and while this is all going on, we have this flow that's getting crazy with the wet weather. It's been wet all spring and into the summer. And so the flows are still extraneous. So we're getting all this flow that the plant was not designed to handle. So you got to carry the two million gallons of the basin. And of course, that's raw sewer and it's pretty full and there's not much you can do with it because I can't bring it into the plant. It's to the point where it's actually, uh, you know, blown up the back end of the plant, which is causing us problems at the filters trying to get out. So those are the things that we're going to address. And I think GHD will address them better than I. And so that's why they're here tonight to address those issues. Well, I, I certainly hope that we can come up with a, a resolution for the folks down there because, you know, Mr. Chairman, we've thrown thousands and thousands of dollars at this. And I, I mean, if it's not doing any good, I, I, I just find this really. Well, the mist the misters we did, but that didn't seem to work. That seemed to create more or as many problems as it supposedly solved. So well, I don't know that. Jim and I attended a meeting with James. Dave, no, Burns. Dave Burns. Dave Burns, who's our regional guy, absolutely. Friday, Friday, week ago Friday, right. regarding the odor issue. And he had two recommendations. One, use the misters, but not all the time. Don't turn them on and leave them on. He says, we, use them as needed. We did. 
but this is what he said. Don't I, do it all the time. We did. Watch what you did. We're, and the other recommendation was a clarifier. Was it the LED? Was that what he called it? An LED clarifier, which would process better. Is that my understanding, Jimmy? It would process. It's better with solids. So what it does is it, it minimizes the escaping of the solids. So what would an LED clarify cost compared to the standard clarifiers you have been replacing? We haven't replaced any clarifiers yet. You've we, been adding? No. No. They're okay. just structures. We have to I'm, build new structures. So we've okay, asked I'm, I'm going to back up for a second. I remember the capital plan purchasing clarifiers. We never purchased any clarifiers. Did I not see clarifiers on the uh, uh, capital plan? Clarify, what you see on the capital plan for clarifiers is that the, the, we have two clarifiers that are built in 1972. The internal drums are ancient. And on the capital plan, they're designed, we're supposed to get those replaced at like $72,000 a piece, which we have not done because our capital plan has been, we've had things come yep. to the higher priority. So it's on the capital plan to replace the center drums as they go around. That's, That's a okay. whole different now, ball game. That's what repair. is this LED clarifier he's recommending? LED clarifiers, and, 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 and GHA can talk about it better than I, you can ask them specifically, but it, it somehow baffles the flow of the, so you bring, and the way a clarifier works is the solids and the flow comes in, goes to the top, comes out, drops down, and then it just makes its way up, and for us, it's coming over the wares. They make new clarifiers that redirect that back down in, so you have minimal potential of escaping on the normal operations. But when you're talking about a flow design rate of two MGD and you're getting a flow of 15 or I'm sorry of eight or nine MGD, then I don't even that becomes an issue. So in the and remember this plant was designed on the normal flows. They did all the numbers calculations, 20 year plan, so this is our flows. And then they had a little bit added on for maybe I and I or what have you. We're dealing with wet weather that is increasing our flows beyond the imagination. So that's what we have to deal with. If you look at most of our proposals, they're out to 2050 because that's the model of the government saying that this wet, wet weather is not going away and it's going to get worse. So you need to make your projections up to 2050 to handle the flows that are coming in. And so it's, it's, it's a dynamics of, of, of hydraulics through the plant. Expanding into 2050, talking about flows, it didn't talk about the expansion that's going to happen in this town, the building that's going to occur, the volume that's going to keep coming in. Can we really handle the Redbrook Road facility? Well, with what we're doing right now. We, we're getting overflows all the time. We're getting wet weather, we got to address it. So to answer your question, I, I, I'd have to look at the numbers. I don't know if we can handle Redwood. I don't know if we can handle anything. So it, it, and to your point, let's just have a moratorium. There'll be no more connections in the town of Wareham. So we shut it down. Unfortunately, permission has already been given to, the, to Woodland Cove. And again, same thing with, uh, we've got about eight places we already given permission to. And these developments are going to come online. And that's just, uh, yeah, absolutely. That's the. What other developments between Woodland we got the, Cove? The, the, we, well, gosh, we've got the mall that's being developed now wait in front minute. of Walmart Sorry. that's being developed. We've got, uh, Sorry, we've wait, got wait, the trailer stop, parks. Stop. There's four units going in front of Walmart, right? 12,000 gallons per day flow. Each one of them? Total flow, 12,000 gallons. For all four units. So we've well, committed I'm, I'm to. I'm just going to let me figure. Let me finish. One of them is an eye doctor, right? And we don't know what the other three are, but you are giving it. They, we, the developers came to the town with a set of plants for 12,000 gallons. Okay, so it's not my place to say which, so we allocated those gallons. What they do with them, I can't tell you. So it's we also have the trailer the, park that has another 20 or 30,000 gallons per day to we're go. We're trying to get online. Well, the trailer park is online, but they're expanding. We gave them permission over a five-year period to extend to 200 homes. Which That's Great Hill, Great Hill Mobile, Mobile Park. Park. So they have to expand. But they're not all. They are not all online right now, correct? No, but my point is, is that every day they're coming more and more and more online. Okay. So when we do our projections, what's, what's another one? Oh my goodness, I don't have the list in front of me. There's four or five that are but coming. But we really online. to the point that we really cannot continue to add to our facility without. Expansion, correct? Did well, I get that well, impression from Mr. Burns? That's probably that's part of that is true. Part of the problem that we face is we've got allocations out there that aren't being used, and perhaps uh, it may be germane to go back and look at these allocations and see whether or not they're realistic, and whether they need to be at the level they're at, or whether they could be cut back or rescinded that if they're being, not used. Yeah, and that being a potential, if it is a potential, uh, that essentially increases the capacity of our system by not having that allocated out. Uh, at this point, I can't answer that. That's only a 
Well, to the numbers, we hope Born Born has 109,000 gallons that they haven't used yet. That's theirs. That's allocated. At any, at any time, they can put 100,000 gallons online, and we own it. So there's some things out there that yeah, we can't stop. We've already. Well, the, you say we can't stop them. I mean, there are things out there I think that that are in the mix that could be relooked at mm. and but, and reassessed but, because that amount that uh, Born has that they could utilize uh, they're putting in their new plant down there does that mean they're not going to utilize I, this is I can't that, answer that but I, I understand you can't I'm I can't just, answer that as a, as yeah, a, yeah. that's a what if that's a question I think that we need to bring to Born and find out whether or not they want to maintain that they do. We've asked the question. They will re uh, to, they will retain their rights to the 100,000. They say they need a total of 300,000. They're going to build a 100,000 gallon plant, and they'll still be 100,000 shy. That's their answer. So I don't know how it's going to work. Mr. Chairman. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. I don't understand why we're adding one additional unit until we clean up the smell and clean up the plant and because we don't know what the weather's going to be like we could have another wet if we take on all these additional people these additional units what are we going to do to these folks that have to live by this plant well he's going to we're going to present something this evening to try to try, try to address that because you know even with the existing if we do nothing else we have a problem with flow but doing a wet weather that has to be addressed in itself so that's something we have to address and size it accordingly and that's why the numbers we're using up to 2050 to make sure we can accommodate the future also with the projected flows or increase of wet weather flow so we're trying to we're trying to answer so those if we are looking at the projects that have already been approved has there anybody has anybody come to you asking for hookups that hasn't already been approved um, I have nothing in front of me, but we have a lot of single-family homes that are tying in that are part of developments that we already approved. So that those are consistent. We just tied one in today uh, uh, for Hathaway Road. Yeah, but we, so those are all. But if the on Hathaway no road is one of those that we've been trying to get hooked up. So we know we have. No, it's, a vacant, it's a vacant lot, so we weren't trying to get a vacant lot hooked up. So that's, that's a, a, additional to what we thought. You have counted vacant lots in your counts that haven't been in a projected flow so yes okay the so question is as part of that it. it's part of that projected flow that we haven't but put you, out there okay. but it's it's, but you, al it's all covered allocated for it you understand it's true. it but is anything come for you that you did not foresee anything not as of yet i've had some calls on other developments on swiss speech housing developments um so there's a lot of i have nothing official Okay. I wait until it becomes so official. I would be very we're... cautious about giving approval for anything that comes down until. I we can't give approval. Down. The board's only. I got to bring it to the board. Until we can see what we can yeah. do with, with what we got. I don't think we should approve anything. The board will be the deciding factor. We ha uh, we've approved the developments up on Mine and Ave. There's a total of six or seven condos. I haven't seen those bill them yet, but they cleared the lots, so those are potentials. They talk about selling those lots, so those are all things that are in the works that we have to consider. But you've accounted for those seven units have. homes on mine it. It, it, you, yeah. We have, but to your point, even though we accounted for them with the wet weather, which we didn't account for, is putting us in a position where we have to be cautious moving forward, even though we allocated all those gallons. The question is, they're not here yet, and we're in trouble, and to your point, we can't bring them in until we solve the present problem. So my understanding, Jim, we are the only ones to approve additional hookups to the sewer that is correct. facility. So we approved Woodland, this committee approved Woodland Cove. Woodland Cove is a 40B, so you got to be careful because it doesn't no, need, no, no, doesn't need just, approvals for 40B. It's a whole have, different ball game. We have to tell them they can, whether or not we can accommodate them. We can tell them that, but it's a state run thing. So I, I got to be careful with 40 B's because they can get approved without us saying we can't accommodate them. There's a lot of history to that. I'm telling you. So that's be careful. 40 B's a different world. Oh, okay. Okay. If I understand that correctly, you don't need approval. So the sewer cannot handle you, but, but you don't need our approval. Well, it's, it's been done. Go, right? go talk to Marion and go talk to Revere. There's many, many communities. Look it up through this town where 40 B's and the courts yep. make you do things that you can't and you got to make it work. So that's some, that's out of our control. So I, be careful with 40 B's. I'm sorry. That's I right. went off a tangent. I come back. Really? I didn't notice. I'm sorry. 
I done. It's okay. Pre-treat and coordinator, Mr. Uh, uh, Chairman, I've been on vacation the last couple of weeks. I'm still on vacation, so I really don't have a, a great, I know that we're out there, we're how dressing was it. it how so. was it down in the islands? I'm sorry, it was great. It, no, I, 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 I got no place. I was, plan, I was planning to go to New Jersey to, be, to partake in the Northern Trust golf tournament, but I, I had some medical issues and it never happened. So uh, it's been a vacation of fighting medical issues, but nonetheless, uh, <laughs> I did get some good weather, so we'll, we'll take, leave it at that. So I have no really substantial report for you on the pretreatment, so I, I would okay. defer it to the next meeting to get that to you. Okay, we've got that young gentleman sitting behind you breathlessly waiting to come up to that microphone. I think we should take him, bring him forward. It must be. Russ from uh, GHD. A few handouts I'll, I'll pass out for you. All right, thank you. Okay, yes, thank you. You do kill a Thank whole you. forest? Thank you. You kill a whole forest? All that paper? Us environmental engineers. I'll email them next time to everybody. <laughs> Thanks, Russ. Uh, good evening. My name is Russ Kleekamp. I'm an engineer with the company uh, GHD. And we're here tonight to talk about a couple items. One is a summary of the uh, sewer modeling we did for the industrial park. And the other item um, I'll talk about tonight is the application for SRF funding for various improvements at the treatment plant. So uh, if we could start with, I guess, the, the sewer modeling for the industrial park, that will be the packet. It's a little thicker. It's the one stapled together. And I apologize. Some of these modeling memorandums can be very confusing and, and difficult even for myself to read. Um, so we put an executive summary at the beginning, and I'll summarize that report. Um, but what might be helpful, if we go to figure 3A, it's roughly in the middle of the package. It's an aerial photograph with some different colored sewer mains on it. And if you want to keep an eye on that while I give a summary, it, it'll hopefully make things a little clearer. So what the assignment was, was to develop a sewer model of the industrial park. I understand there's been some concern about connections and flows and capacities, things like that. And uh, just real quick before we get into the details, a sewer model is a tool that engineers and municipalities use to mimic the conditions of the sewer pipes underground and the pump stations and see what capacity is remaining. Every pipe in your system um, depending on the diameter and the slope and the material has a given capacity. That's to say uh, an eight inch pipe that's 100 feet long and has a slope of 1% has a capacity of 500,000 gallons per day. Well, if you get 501,000 or 501,000 gallons per day, that one gallon is not going to, that, that pipe's at capacity. And that's what causes manholes to surcharge. If you've ever seen a real heavy rain event and we get the water coming out of the manholes, it can cause sewerage to back up into basements things like that. So it's a, it's, it's a bad thing when the pipes, pipes surcharge. So that's one of the main elements that the sewer model will tell you is that you plug in all your flows, you run the model, and it will tell you which pipes um, have capacity issues. So the good news under present existing today conditions is there's no red flags, there's no issues with the area that we looked at. And it's, again, the industrial park is the three pump stations. It's Kendrick, mm -hmm. Thatcher, and Springborn, and then eventually Springborn pumps down to the Narrows, which pumps to the treatment plant. So under, under today's conditions, uh, it's, it's no, no worries. And the model, when we do it, we plug in flows, and I was listening to the conversation before this, and it uh, made a lot of sense. We mentioned there's this one property that a developer has, but he, he's an eye doctor, but he's saying he might need, you know, you've allocated 4,000 gallons per day. Well, the best we can do is work off the numbers that are given to us. So the flows that we incorporate in here uh, may be conservative, and when we run, run the model under what we call the peak conditions, that would be at a 8, 9, 10 o'clock in the morning when everybody's taking showers, making breakfast, and again at 4 or 5. Excuse me one second. Yes, sir. Don't mean to interrupt, but do you have any chart or something that would uh, indicate how many 
uh, what kind of gallonage a specific type of business averages? So normally what is the base? The, the developers will you typically use the Title V guidelines, so an eye doctor. I believe they go off of, I think it's a square footage, it's a gallon per square footage, um, regardless whether it's an eye doctor or a foot doctor. If it's a medical establishment, those are the DEP guidelines. Um, other establishments go by the number of seats. Um, so there's, uh, again, normally those are conservative too, just to make sure that ample room is present. But again, they're the flows that we're given and it's the information that we have. And I'll talk about a little bit how you can fine tune this after we develop our base model and uh, potentially address some of those concerns. There is a chart, and I can afford that there is, it's in the Title V regulations that tells the different amount of gallons appropriated for different uses. Okay. Um, so when we run our model, we, we look at a few different conditions. We look at an average day condition, which takes a flow of a property. If you take that flow for the day and uh, divide it by 24 hours, then divided by 60 minutes an hour, you get your average gallon per minute flow, which is kind of a baseline. That's your average conditions. So under average conditions, it's, it's no worries, it's no concern. But when you multiply that by the peaking factor, because although your house may produce 200 gallons per day, it's not a steady, constant flow of 200 gallons throughout the, the 24 hours. It comes in surges after a shower, you run the dishwasher, kind of comes all at, all at once mostly. So that's what we call a peak scenario. And typically, if you multiply your average day conditions by a factor of four or five, that will give you your peak flow conditions. So in this model, we take the water use of all the properties that are connected to the, the sewer system, and we get that we acquired the water use information from uh, the water department, so we can see what the water is coming in. We multiply that by 0.9, which is a typical uh, factor, and that's the water going out. Obviously, some water is consumed, so you have to account for that. So when you look at all of your properties and you peak them under existing conditions, you're still, everything is fine. There's no, no concerns. However, when you look at the future um, with the proposed um, connections that we were provided, um, that's the, uh, the, the Eagle Hill Trailer Park, I believe, and then also uh, AD Makepeace Development. Um, and then recently, I understand it was the, the, the Stone Path, the malt company that also connected, which discharges not consistently, but they, they have a larger drum or a larger volume that gets discharged uh, more rapidly. Uh, when you combine those three developments along with your existing flow, both your Kendrick and your, your Thatcher pump stations are oversized. And what these different colors on this figure 3A show, uh, I, I try to go by a a stoplight pattern. Green is good, yellow is questionable, um, orange is at capacity, and red is over capacity. Now, when I say it's at capacity, if it's 100% full, I'm factoring, uh, we take the peak flow, that's the flow from every property at the same time, multiplied by five. Everyone's taking the shower at the exact same time and running the dishwasher at the same time. So it's highly unlikely that you're going to see um, that condition. So when a model comes back, and says that, okay, you're at this higher capacity under peak conditions, it's probably not going to happen, so I'm not super concerned about that. But when the pipes come back over 100% capacity, that says it's more of a realistic condition, and there is a chance or a probability if these future developments that the flows that were provided to us connect in are going to overwhelm these pipes and, and these pump stations. So that's what the model can tell us. Now, how do we fine-tune this? I just said how it's a little conservative, things like that. Um, there are ways to put in flow meters to get exact flows and things like that to calibrate your model. Um, and again, we only did it for these mains that are in the industrial park. Uh, and a model is kind of a living animal once you create it. The hard work is to make, there's a lot of, you have to go manhole by manhole, property by property, entering all the flows and all this sort of stuff to create the model. But once it's made, it really takes a few taps of a button. Um, the discussion before is, well, what if this property really only does discharge 100 gallons a day, not 4,000 gallons a day? What if AD Makepeace says, okay, we don't need 100,000 gallons, and, or if we need more, if we need this? You can add those flows almost instantaneously and run the model. In fact, a lot of the towns that we work with, they have a, a complete model of the whole town for that purpose to evaluate future development, future flows, things like that. Um, for the towns that don't have models and uh, that capability, usually it's required that an independent engineering firm would uh, 
the, the developer would say, okay, we're going to provide 10,000 gallons per day, and they'd have an engineering report that says this is how it's not going to impact your system. And it usually requires the developer to put in a flow meter to, to prove that we're not going to overwhelm the system. And, you know, the flow meter would sit in place for the period of a month or so and show the highs and the lows and uh, what the characteristics of the pipe, the, the pipe conditions are. Um, but really having that model as an asset, and now that it's built, if there is, I'm sure there's going to be ever-changing businesses coming and going and this flow and that flow, it's, it, it's rather straightforward to put those in and see what the results will be. So with that, I'll open it up to, to, to questions. I, just a, I was just looking at your map on three. Three eight. Hmm. I've noticed you get the red line from Thatcher's pump station out to uh, to its Thatcher Lane. Mm -hmm. What has created that thing? Because it looks like that's uh, that's going out, not coming in. That that is that's the gravity main going into the pump station. Mm -hmm. So. Generally, you'll see the pipe goes from yellow to orange to red because right. it picks up flow as the pipeline goes on. So that's kind of a common trend. You see it, you know, a pipe will start somewhat in good capacity, but that, that would be at those manholes where those flows are entering. And then again, if certain pipes are installed and have a shallower slope, even if they're the same, say they're all 12 inch, but some pipes are steeper, some are shallower, the shallower pipes are going to have a, a, a lower capacity. So if you have the water rushing down the steep, when it hits, it hits a slower velocity, it's going to push it up that manhole, it creates a hydraulic grade line. So this red may not be capacity, it may be just the flow pattern of the product. Um, the because stone path does not, stone path empties into Kendrick. Empties into Kendrick, which pumps into, pumps into Thatcher. Thatcher. Pumps into Thatcher. Because Thatcher, it has to be, it can't be, under Thatcher Lane, see that building under the letter NE in Lane? Correct, yep. That is about to be a, manufacture, a marijuana manufacturing facility. And I'm wondering, I'm hoping they don't have a lot of water discharge. They just have a lot of water going to the plant. So it's not so much the flow as it is the design of the pipes causing the red? It can be. If the slow, I don't have the record drawings in front of me, but if the pipe is shallower at a shallower slope, Mm -hmm. You know, if the topography goes down a hill and the pipes kind of follow the topography and then it level, if it, the pipes are level or, or have less of a slope, yes, they have. That big building just to the uh, left of the red is a tire warehouse. Mm -hmm. So I can't see anything in that area putting a flow to cause it to go red from vo for volume is, is what I'm saying. It just, I don't see it that way. Understood. But again, if, the, if that pipe, that, yeah, that. So it could be the structure, the layout of the pipes. Correct. You know. That red pipe might be at 1% where the orange pipe is at 5% and the, f so, go ahead. And, and the Can Thatcher, we tell if Stone Path is doing this to us? It, it, I wanted to address, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, but I wanted to address was the Thatcher and the tire place. Remember the tire place, they washed their floors and the, there's, there's water that we don't talk about. So they had to put special things in there because of their flow, customers, bathrooms. So I just don't want the assumption to be because their tire place, there's no flow there. You know, sometimes these facilities have greater flow than we can possibly imagine. And that's reality. And, and so they have four bays that they're constantly cleaning. That water goes into a drain system that goes through a tank and then comes to us. So let's I just want to be clear on that. Um, Thatcher, the, to address what's going into Kendrick through the malt factory, as of right this second, what they're pumping, we have surcharges to the pump station, but nothing has overwhelmed us. So what we're saying is that if they want to put another drop, then they need to make sure that they can handle it. So, and we based, and, and if you look at where he says it's not going to be over capacity, that's based on their free future buildup. So the question may become, they can never build out in the future with the existing conditions. Today's okay, but that's as far as you're going to go. So this allows us to understand what can be done in the future without causing a, a overflow, a Absolutely. backup or Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And, and this would be, you know, for example, now that this report, you know, once we finalize it, if indeed a, a business is going to go up where you were saying um, uh, above the, it looks like a cul-de-sac or that any in the word lane. Dead yeah. end down there. We, it's a dead end. This could be provided to that the developer say, listen, we, we understand we have an issue. We have an engineering report that says we have two pipes that might be over capacity. That manhole that's right in between the two red pipes, we want you to put a flow meter there and leave it for a month and just verify what the flows are. And they may come back a lot less saying, listen, you know, the, the modeling, uh, you know, this memo may be a little conservative based on the factors that were used. And, you know, we got the proof and that's with the flow meter showing what actual conditions are. And we feel we can tie, and that's, it's a very valid argument. I mean, it's, 
a model to get at 100 percent, it, it's very difficult to get these to mimic the exact conditions, how much flow is going through pipes. But it does show you your weaker links, which is exactly what this is. Do we have a flow meter from Stone Path? They have a, a valve. We asked for one to, to regulate, but they have a valve that they manually manipulate to say under the flow rate that the pump station can handle. But there's no flow meter, no ma'am. We asked for this because you indicated, Guy, that they were going to overwhelm our system. That is correct. Have they done that? No, because they haven't built out. Remember, when, you come, when they come to the board with a proposal, they give you their max. At the max, we were concerned. We asked them to do an impact study for the max flow. It was never done. So there was always a concern because as we start adding, and we know that, the, that we already knew that the uh, Great Hill Mobile Park, when they did their, uh, their, their study, we found that that system was, was marginal at best. Now we're adding something else, so we said to them the same thing. You need to do a study. Well, that had, didn't happen, so we hired Russ to tell us what's really happening there, and that's what we are. So everything's based upon their future. Today, right this second, it, you know, there are some moments, but it's handling it. And that's, if we stay like we are today, then we are. So if they come and say we want to add the two more drums, the answer is it can't be done. Keep doing what you're doing, you're fine, but you can do nothing else. Now, my understanding, the Kendrick pump station also takes the flow from the mobile home park? Absolutely. So as we add to the mobile home park and bring in more and more, not just expand it, but include homes that are in there now, we, so, yes. we have a problem. That's right. And so, again, that's why we're good today, because we said to them, and that's what the impact study is all about, and that's why we're adamant about it. So the trailer park said, we want to add approximately 130 more homes. They have the trailer parks. Okay, great. And so we said, do the modeling. And they did. They hired an engineering firm. They did flow meters. They did also, okay, this is what it's going to be. Our engineers reviewed it and said, and they both agreed that, yeah, Kendrick was marginal at best. It should handle it, but it's much. So that, we had that. When the mall factory wanted to come in, I took this information and said, listen, this scares me. So you need to add to that. You need to do your own modeling on top of that. And that was never happened, and that's been my concerns. So Russ has answered those questions in the long term by doing his modeling. Okay. One more question on the mobile home park. Not, not including the expansion, how many of the existing dwellings there are not connected to sewer? Well, there's 200 and something. We have 100, we have probably 6612. We have probably 78 tied in, the rest are not. We have, we have a five year program. We're into year one and a half of it. The year one and a half, does that mean every so many months you allow one or more to tie in? They have, I'll have to get you the schedule. They have a schedule. But they have a schedule as to when we expect these 200 plus units yes. to eventually tie into our sewer. We asked them, I gotta be frank, we asked them to do five years so we can, and they also put in a flow meter coming to us so we can see real numbers. Because at any time during this process, we find that it's gonna overwhelm us, we told them we, we could shut them down. We could say, you're stopping. So we're, if as we go. Connected, where does their product go? I'm sorry? The Septic that, tanks. Septic they, tanks. Each home has a septic tank? Yeah, so they have issues, and they have uh, two homes, I believe, to a septic tank, okay, and there's some so issues. They so regularly. they get pumped out regularly, the whole nine yards. So they, they are addressing, the DEP would like them addressed, like every mobile home park in Warham, the DEP tank. wants them addressed. Say, well, it's a septic tank. A septic tank, is, it holds the solids and the liquids, and it leaches over, it, it goes over a baffle into a leaching. It's not a Title component. 5. It is a Title 5. Oh. That's what Title 5 is, yes. Yes. I, and they're just old. Okay. Never they're mind. They're old and in trouble. Thank you. But did you, you have already allocated gallonage for the mobile home park? Absolutely, yes, we have. I think it was like, I, I don't have it in front of me, so forgive me, but it's between you know, they, tw they, be like 24, 25,000 gallons per day. Okay, so I'm guessing from what you just said, they're probably using 20% of it right now? Whatever the numbers, you're right. Just based on rough numbers, something like that. And they've got a ways to go. And we did a five-year program. And, and, and so we're working that program. So, so that's now, why we... With the gallonage that you've allocated to them, will the existing infrastructure handle it? So we did the model. So yes, we allocated the gallons. We made them do a impact study. And they did that. And we said, yes, we can accommodate those gallons. We put it over five years. That's why we stack on that. We want everybody to do it. Well, that's why I'm looking like Russ on that particular thing. That flow would be coming into the Kendrick pump station. Right now, it goes from green to yellow, or mm -hmm. green to orange, or mm -hmm. whatever that color is. I can't tell you. It's a different thing. Right. Okay. Uh, if 
the full gallonage comes online that he's allocated, what's that going to do to this? And when you say the full gallonage, does that include 25. the the um, eat the the trailer park? Yes. I mean, well, it, I think what he's asking is when the trailer park hits capacity, the the full allocation of twenty three thousand gallons. How is these numbers going to change? I believe that's what's asking. Right? I could, I could look back at very easily and basically tell you what the remaining capacity in these pipes is and look at that number from from the trail. What the well, you no, said is twenty two thousand. Yeah, I believe I it is. Thought you might be able to tell me from. Not off the top of my head, there's a lot of numbers involved, but you know we're showing 80, 81 to 100 percent full, um, and the reason why we stop it at 80 is actually DEP says you can only utilize 80 percent of what that pipe can carry. It's a regulation; they want a 20 percent buffer. So really, when you get to 80 percent of a pipe's capacity, that's technically full, um, but there is that reserve capacity there. So the, the orange ones here, that's why we picked that number. Uh, it wasn't just an arbitrary selection. What's the solution to changing orange to green? Or? So that there's a few things that you can do. You can to, to better manage your flows. Um, okay. You can see if there's an opportunity for any of the, the larger flows that are connected to either pump it off peak hours, which would be, uh, for example, in the evening. We did a project in a neighboring town without going into too many details, but it was an extremely large federal building that just like this was tying into a sewer main that had no capacity. They built a 20,000 gallon holding tank and put it uh, and pumped at nighttime. So you can. So theoretically, we could do that with the uh, mobile home park. You could you could do off peak hours. Um, I've seen septic tank retrofits that pump out of a septic tank. It can pump at nighttime. Again, that involves adding in a, a mechanized unit into every septic tank. So it's kind of a, a process to look at that. But uh, it's usually equalization or again to fine tune this model to really see what's going on is to install a flow meter there and really get a good idea of what that exact flow is coming in to really pinpoint what we're working with. When you start talking about flow meters, what's the, the cost time frame? Those kinds of things. So there's companies that uh, specifically do that, National Water Main and uh, a few other companies, they come and install a flow meter. They, every week they check on it, make sure they report it. You usually want it in there for a few months. Um, I'd have to look back at the last quote that we got, but okay, just, it's a, I'm just looking for a thousand, idea. two thousand a week, something like that for one flow meter. To rent. I, it might be less. I can, I'll, I'll get you that guy, guy I'll get you that curious, exact number. And in order to give a, a determination that's usable in your projections, how long would a flow meter have to be installed in a given area? Because I'm assuming these things are temporary. They are temporary, correct. For, for this, for an industrial sort of area, it, it may not be as long as other areas because it should be a, a more consistent, a less seasonal flow. So um, weeks to a month would, would probably be suitable. For an area that's recreational, seasonal, um, you want to try to capture the highest flows. So late spring into the summertime, it might be three or four months for different areas. But for, I would expect probably a, a few weeks to a month would be suitable for an industrial park. That's all I've got for the moment. I'm sure I'll come up with something else. Sure, wake up and sure. Later. And we can be more than happy to come back if there's more questions, uh, come back to readdress questions that come up. Isn't very comforting to see all that red. No. Oh, those uh, on Main Street. So, for which which figure are you looking at? Three uh, B. Yeah, there there are some. Again, that's the 12 inch main that comes down before it turns into that uh, 21 inch interceptor. And now you're connecting, and you know, at each one of these manholes, you got more and more flow connecting in. So as that pipe goes on, the flow gets greater and greater. Street is red. Um, Mr. Chair, I first time seeing this. Is there a chance we can bring it back on the agenda? Give me a chance to read it and have questions. Sure. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Yes, from, from me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm losing my hearing. I can't hear. It is. It's, 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 it's the air conditioners on the side. Oh, it's, it's hard to hear in this room when they're all pumping away. You want to run over this SRF funding? Sure. So are we ready to move on to the next item and discuss the uh, SRF? So that's a little uh, more streamlined. Just, it's just one, uh, one sheet item here. So um, 
Again, the discussion before was uh, uh, talking about uh, some of the, the concerns at the plant, one of them being the odors. And um, after working with uh, at the plant for a while, there's, there's really three major items that uh, need to be addressed or need to be fixed at the wastewater treatment plant. Obviously, one is the odors. Um, we need to, to, to look at something to t take care of those. Um, two is the equalization capacity. Uh, we have a situation where the filters get flow that they can't handle and they end up surcharging. Um, uh, so we have to look at adding uh, additional capacity for wet weather events. And the third big item is the filters themselves. Uh, the plant, uh, it was designed before certain, certain regulations are in place, but actually codes and regulations now require plants to have uh, uh, filters that you can take one of the filters offline and still meet the required flows of the plant, which now, even with all the filters online, you have times when they can't meet the flows, and then you get that situation where the flow comes up. So those are kind of the three major items that we're looking to address. Um, as far as the additional storage or equalization goes, we have a pretty good idea about that. That was the report that CZM funded, um, and we submitted a grant to do the final design. I was hoping to have word back from them um, and, and bring some good news tonight, but uh, we have not heard back. So we have a good idea about the uh, size of that lagoon and, and also the cost. Um, for the filters, uh, we did receive a, a, a quote to put in some new, new filters as well. And again, that will alle help alleviate that condition, that surcharging, and, and when you get that, that, that discharge um, at the treatment plant, which there's occasions now where, that, where you get that. And then again, uh, probably the, the uh, biggest item, or, or the most critical, is uh, a new influent basin to capture the raw wastewater. Now, if you look at the two, raw wastewater lagoons that the plant has. They're, they're good size. They're you know, roughly 170 feet wide by maybe 400 feet long, and you have two of them. So you fill those with raw sewage, and yes, you are going to get odors, of course. So I'm sure there's been talks and discussions about solutions, things that primary clarifiers and covers and things like that. Um, so what we came up with as we're looking at this is really if that's the core and that's the, the, where these odors are being generated, yes, correct, if you cover it. but you don't need that big for a, for a lagoon to capture the raw wastewater coming in. It doesn't have to be the size. I believe each one of those lagoons, guys, two, two million each or one million? One million per. One million, so you have two million gallons of storage. You can dramatically cut that down. Um, it's referred to either as a four bay or a settling lagoon to a much smaller lagoon. Um, if you've looked at the, the treatment plant itself where the lagoons are, there's some depressions right next to the existing lagoons. Um, and if you put a smaller lagoon to capture that raw flow as it's coming in and cover it, you can manage it a lot better. And what I, when I say manage, you can, clean, you can clean that lagoon after it gets drained out. You can capture the odors. You can contain them. And then you don't have this wide open, you know, the, this acreage of, of raw wastewater out there. What we would propose to do with the, or, or one of the things that we want to look at with the two existing lagoons is it should be a fairly simple piping modification to bring flow from the clarifiers, which is already partially treated, back into those lagoons for storage. So normally now their equalization, it starts right at the start of the whole process. It's the first place all the water goes. If we can put that equalization in the middle of the treatment process, then you're not equalizing it with raw wastewater. It's still semi-treated wastewater. It's still going to have an odor, but it's not, it's not going to be anywhere near as the, the magnitude of, of raw wastewater. Um, but provided it all goes well and we install the new filters and those new filters are capable of flushing that these higher flows that we see during wet weather events, you really won't even need these equalization basins. There will still be storms. I shouldn't, I shouldn't say that because the storms are only going to get worse and worse. We are going to get wet weather events. I and I is, is going to keep happening and potentially get worse and worse. Again, and as you expand, you're bringing more flows into the plant. So you will need uh, the equalization. So these are three very big items. Um, they can be done independently, but they work very nicely together to solve a solution. Um, the cost for this, uh, what we're projecting is, again, and I, I always say it every time I give a cost estimate, the worst thing an engineer can do is give a number and come back and have that number go up. So we say $10 million because there's still a lot of unknowns. We haven't had time to look and analyze and see the exact sizing of everything, where it's going, what the, what the uh, utility conflicts may be, what sort of modifications we have. We just haven't got to that final design phase, so we can't give a very concrete cost. So that $10 million hopefully is conservative and hopefully will go down in the future. We can't just send this all to Bourne? Excuse me? We can't just send this all to Bourne and forget about it? Uh, we can send it to Bourne. I don't think we'd forget about it, though. <laughs> Show it here back. 
Um, so this is just a summary sheet that ex <coughs> explains what the, uh, the three components are that we're looking to do, uh, the reasons why we need to do each one of these three, um, the cost, $10 million. Uh, what SRF, and maybe you know this, if you do, tell me to be quiet and move on, but the State Revolving Fund, it's a funding mechanism for major capital projects for either water or sewer projects, and it's a low interest to zero interest loan. Um, we're going to try to put this in at a zero interest uh, for a, a, a duration, um, I believe it's 20 years for the project. Um, and if, if you get this, it's a very, it's a very good, good thing to get. It's a very uh, uh, financially feasible way to, to fund these projects. A few things, though, that in order to get the SRF funding, uh, the town meeting has to approve the budget. Um, it has to be appropriated, so this will have to go to town meeting and be approved uh, in order to be eligible for SRF funding. What would they have to approve? The $10 million for funding this. And they would have to be done by August 23rd? So what needs to be done by August 23rd is what they call a project evaluation form, this PEF. It's an online application, and it basically tells DEP that the town of Wareham is interested in $10 million um, for the SRF funding. And it's a form. It has a whole bunch of things you fill out. Um, and DEP gets that, and they put that on a list. So they get all these project evaluation forms from all the towns that want to do all sorts of projects. And DEP comes up and says, okay, we need $500 million to, to fund all of these projects. It's a competitive um, application, so you do have to, to rank all the different items that you're fixing and all sorts of things. Once DEP puts you on the list, then provided that you meet the following town meeting fund, uh, the town meeting passes, I believe it's in October, is the town meeting, or the fall? Fourth Monday in October. In the fall, so that passes, and then you have to submit your request um, it's an SRF application package. It's about this thick. There's all sorts of stuff, and it has to go to DEP um, around, I think it's next, next summer sometime, is they need the official application. So this isn't, actu this isn't a commitment to DEP. Again, it doesn't really look good if you do apply for it. The, if you do the PEF and it passes town meeting, it's basically that you know, the town intends on doing this. So it's, it, if you pull back too many times, eventually DEP says, oh, wait a second, every time you put one of these PEFs and we allocate the funds and you don't do it, so you know, we're done with it. Um, so it's generally not good unless something very unforeseen happens. Um, so this is the start of the SRF process. Um, you cannot get SRF funding if there is any type of an administrative consent order. So if something happens that DEP comes down on the town and files this administrative consent order, you are no longer eligible for SRF funding. So in, in the, for this, it's really good to be proactive rather than reactive. We've seen a few um, blips on the radar here that there are some weaknesses at the plant, and now would be the time to act uh, to go after these. So really now is the best time to go after the SRF funding. Has Wareham ever pulled back from what? This year. We had a $3 million SRF funding that we, so the process, you apply 23rd, you get your notice in January, and then you have to have allocated the funds to move forward. Uh, we didn't allocate funds, so yeah, this pulled back this year. Is that for the water warriors? No, that, that was $3 million. That was for the evaluation, town-wide evaluation to find out where our weaknesses were throughout the okay, town. So we, We've got generals, we, we want to be more specific. We didn't get funds for it at town meeting, or we didn't apply for funds at town meeting. That is correct. We didn't do that. So no. we didn't submit an article. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, we, so supply, we apply for the funding, and if we're approved, would we get a $9 million, or would it be anywhere in between that number? We, we would fine-tune it for, you know, this is, again, this is just a, the initial submittal of a cost. Provided it passes town meeting, um, the, the application package for the SRF funding is much more detailed. So we'd have to come up with a more refined cost. And again, you mentioned the other, you know, the other form of clarifiers. If we take a look at those and, evaluate and find that that might be a more feasible option to solve the orders, we still have flexibility <coughs> to, to look at these things. It's due dates a week away. That, but it's for the project evaluation form on the list. So to get on the list. list. Okay, so it's very vague. It, excuse me? It's vague. It is no it, detail. It, it's, there's detail, but it can, it can, if things change between now and the application time for the loan, we, we can do that. And September 5th is the deadline for all articles. It's the 5th. We don't meet until the 12th. September 5th is the deadline for all articles on fall town meeting. Uh, again, we don't meet until the 12th, so we have to do something uh, in between. 
or the, you know, we have to write an article circulate. I don't know how that's going to. We could have another meeting. That's not an issue. Okay, yeah. then you're good. You're good. I don't have a problem with okay. that. Just... And, and I think they can also do a placeholder. I think you've talked about that before and done things. So mm, They will not put up placeholders I, I, again. I don't know. I just, I'm just saying there's options, so I don't want to let that be a deterrent. So I just don't want September 5th to come and go and find that we've wasted right. mm -hmm. our place in line because we couldn't get funding until because it's critical to get the so, so there's two things and I wanted to answer uh, the chairman's question the article will, the article will be up to 10 million same thing with the RSF fund will be up to 10 million so they'll fund it doesn't mean you got to use the whole 10 million doesn't mean you get it just well, no, it's mean, up to that's all they're what saying. You're saying is that if we if we authorize 10 million because we've got to throw that out there we're right. not looking at spending that 10 million that is correct it's up right to 10 now. that's so right it, getting that's correct. The funding for nine. But if we don't we get the, the, we don't get the nine million. Well, let's. Well. Because one million, so to be clear, one million dollars we have to fund ourselves because they right. do not do engineering, and so it's it's in the article. But um, so we apply. What you when you apply for what we apply for, what they'll do the twenty third. Like it'll be for the school money. You have to spend all the money on design and everything ahead of time, before you know whether or not you're going to get any reimbursement. No. Basically. No. The, the, we're going to, we, here's two things we're going to, here's two facts. One is that it's going to be tell me in project, a million from us when we do the actual design and a nine million to the, from, uh, that we're going to borrow to actually do the, the construction. Those are two numbers we know. So until we get the, on the list and we allocate a nine million, then we can do the construction. At that point, we'll take the million dollars out of our budget. So wherever the board decides to pull that from, you know, retainer earnings or what have you. That's the way the program works. So when they actually get to work, that million we got to pay for. We just got to start funding the money. And the nine million is when we start building, that's reimbursed money from the SRF funding. Mr. Chairman. Well, they build oh, up. I have a question. Guy, this question's for you. We're going to look for 10 million at town meeting. Yes. What about lining the pipes and all that? How much more money is it? We haven't even done on. So oh gosh, we have. Work. So this is going to be on top of all of this. Yes, ma'am. There's there's projects and projects and projects. So I don't know how to answer the questions. So we talked at the very opening statement. You talked about getting things done, and I said to you, yes, it sounds good, but it's all expensive, and so we have to pick and choose. So all these issues we're facing, which is lining more pipes, fixing more man, oh, these are. These don't go away, or the corrosion of our pump stations that we have to fix. Those things aren't going away. This is just on top of that. So yes, absolutely. And when we first did our, and, and I know people want to hear it, and I hate to beat a dead horse, when we first did our capital improvement plan, our CIP, we asked for $100 million. And we said at that point, when GHD did the report, they said, these aren't made up numbers. These are actual factual numbers by research to replace all the things that we had to replace. That number's out there. So how do we spend that money? Now, we know we don't have $100 million in our pocket, but the question is we still have to spend it, and, and then it's prioritized at the whole nine yards, and that's where we are. This issue with the plant and odors and all that stuff, that's something we have to address along with everything else, and I don't know how we're going to do it. We're, we're a, a relatively blue-collar community for I the most it. part. You're talking about hitting rate, rate payers with astronomical cost what do we how do we do this I, I think there's some there's it's a it's a it's a tough question to answer when we did a report by CDM 10 years ago they out they said that we should be raising our rates annually back 10 15 years ago maybe a little longer now we chose as a community to leave rates the way they were so we got the benefit all of us got the benefit of low rates forever now we're in a situation where it's caught up with us and so we have to raise rates to catch up. That's as simple as that. If we had done our diligence, just like saving money throughout the year to pay your taxes, you don't do it, all of a sudden taxes are due, oh my God, I need this money, it's a major heart attack. So we're behind the eight ball because we haven't been raising rates for all these years. We should have been. Every year, this, if there's an inflationary factors to you and me, then the treatment plan is absolutely the same thing. So annually, we have to raise rates. There's no, and I know that people are struggling. I get all that. But we still have to do these things. It's our, it's our responsibility. And if we, if we don't do our responsibility, and things are, they deteriorate. Then what do we do? So, you know, and it's not well, your problem because it's years yeah. you inheriting this issue, so I, I sympathize with the board. Exa exactly. But we have to address we it. We inherited that people have just put this off and put this off, and now I understand that. We're going to look like the bad guys because we're going to have to hit these poor folks with this. You know, I, I don't know if it's a, a huge senior population. We have affordable house. I mean, this is just. 
or waterfront, yeah, well, waterfront community. And I don't, I don't have all the answers. I just know that there's things that we have to do. Because if they go, if a pump station fails or something, then you're going to spend the money anyway. So we're just trying to figure it out. Guy, I think we'd like to see from you uh, a list of what you think the priorities are that we need to address in some kind of a, you know, listing. Do we do go after more piping now? Devastating. More lining of pipes? Do we go after this? We're looking at, you know, you're looking at $10 million either direction you go. It, Mr. Chairman, I will do something, but it's tough for me because you're asking me to prioritize this first, that second. I can give you, so I'll tell you this. It's based upon likelihood and consequences. So pipes failing have high consequences and high likelihood. We've got an issue at Pinehurst that we've got to address, all right? So we can't, we can't get, ignore that. That's my so, whole point. That's, and that's you're my a, point. And, uh, from where I'm coming from, you're in a better position to provide that information to us than for us to sit here and throw darts at the wall and see where it's going to land. And I don't think I am. I, I, I hear what you're saying. But remember, Pinehurst wasn't even on the list a year ago. I understand that. And so that's why, because every, for what you say, you say, well, I need concrete this neither year. Was, neither was, I don't uh, know. I, neither was uh, Parkwood. I mean, not Parkwood. Uh, Swiss Beach, Swiss Neck. No one's throwing dots at you. Guy, we're, we're, just, we're trying to just, figure it out. Oh, I get it. We're you, trying to figure you know it out. What, I mean, you're born and brought up in this community, too. <laughs> I, I struggle you with everybody else. Spoke. Yes. You know what we're all about. We can't, we can't handle, we cannot hand people, we can't push them out of their homes. That's what we're doing. Well, I, 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 that's not the goal. I, I mean well, that. And I so that. because we're a pure commu poor community, we do get the zero. We do get the forgiveness. There's, so there's benefits that we can get as we pursue these. Uh, I, I just don't think we can ignore them and how we approach them. I, I don't have all the answers. I can tell you that we're in trouble. I can tell you that we have major issues that we have to address. It's, it's pretty straightforward. I, well, just as an aside to back up yeah. for a second, go back to Russ for a minute. With this SRF funding, this is based on doing all three of those items. Correct. At the same time. Is it reasonable to assume that we could apply for SRF funding and only do one of those? You could. The, the most advantageous one to us to do that would provide the biggest bang for the buck, if you will? You could, it's possible. Um, Pros and cons are, again, talking about which one would be a priority to some people. An order-related project might be the priority. To other ones, you have to bring the plant into compliance and do the filters. That might be a priority from an operational standpoint, depending on who you talk to and who you get that from. I mean, the one thing I know is that the longer you wait, the more these projects cost. That's I'm not looking to try to ignore the projects, but going by what Guy was just saying and what Donna was just saying, mm -hmm. you know, the expenses that we've got out there to correct the ills of the past. Significant. We don't have the pocketbook. Sure, sure. To do it. So how do you correct some of these things and still maintain, you know, uh, a replacement improvement going forward within the pocketbook area that we're dealing with? Well, you, you need to be very smart about your spending, what you spend it on. You're absolutely right about prioritization. Um, look at a sewer system like a, a human body where the treatment plant is your heart and the pipes are all the extremities. What's more important, your heart or a finger? Right. So you have to make sure that your heart is working correctly, your treatment plant is working. Without your treatment plant working correctly, you, you can't add more flow. You can't make this a, a place that can need to bring in more revenue and more, more tax base. You can't grow anything without the treatment plant operating correctly. Now, I'm not saying do you absolutely have to do all three of these. It's, it's be most beneficial. But if you did two of them, it's better than doing none of them. Or if you did uh, one, it's better than doing, than doing none. And from your experience and looking at the plant, and you've been through this and all, of the three, what would be the first one, two would, that you would do? From an operational standpoint, you would really need additional capacity at that plant to handle these wet weather events, um, which, which coincides with 
number three, an equalization lagoon. If you were asked my opinion on out of the three, yeah, and I what's that? I'd like to, you know, what's that? Opinion, exactly. It's not going to do. It will help. It has the potential to help with odors. Um, we can look at diver diverting and using the equalization as partially treated. So um, it probably wouldn't help as much of putting in a new lagoon or a new cover on top. And we can explore other options like the um, uh, clarifier that you mentioned before and other improvements that might be able to done. And again, if we have the equalization, then you can better control the flows that are going through those filters. Uh, again, you don't bring the, the, the plant up to current codes um, and you still have operational issues, but it, it should decrease the amount of time that you get clogging and, um, and the, the amount of time that you have to spend uh, fixing those and taking the filters offline. I'm not looking to gut this thing, but I'm looking to see where, we're, you know, what, what becomes practical. Yeah, I would, I would, community. I would mention, you know, there's, it's, it's funny when you look at the, the DP regulations for pump stations and for, like we said, the filters, they always say you have to be able to take the biggest one offline and have your other existing pumps handle that flow, like at a pump station. That's why there's always at least two pumps. Uh, you talked about priorities in the system, and I know the um, guy's been looking at this too. Um, that's great about the pumps, but also the force mains leaving the stations. You only have one force main leaving that station, so if the force main goes down, and that's one of your, your vital arteries, that's a, that's a major player. Right. So your, your first, your major pump stations, um, if I was sitting in guy's shoes and looking at that, that would be very high priority. So look at the conditions of the force mains. How are those? Because if they go down, which they do, and they have, and we've seen in neighboring communities, the cost to fix an accident like that, you have to pay higher rates for contractors, you have to pay premiums, you have to pay overtime, you have to pay night work, you have to do all these things. And again, talking about a, a blue collar community where you want to preserve the funding and make the smartest financial choices, it's not to be reactive, it's to be proactive. But again, you need to know what you need to be proactive for. And there's so many things. That's the problem. It's crazy. It's, it's just, it's out of control. So. That's, that's, that's where we're control. at. We're getting hit. If well, remember here, the here and here. force main still on the table. And our report said we had five years to, to fix it. And we're in year two. So we got this. We got pipes and we got the force main. And we're getting a, I'm, I'm having them draft up a proposal. It's a $2 million just engineering. And so that force main is an issue. It's a major issue and we, we know for a fact that it's in trouble and it's got five years. Now five years could mean six, but it could mean four, but we have time. And we've not even done the, the force main from the onset pump station. It's the exact same no, state. I so I I, and to your point, and we talk about, you know, spending money, and, and, and I don't know what the answer is. And so prioritize, I'll give you a list of things. They're all priorities. The force mains, this, they all need to be done now. I and, so I, and so how do you say, okay, I'm going to pick and choose? Because if you make the wrong choice, it's going to be costly to, to all of us. But actually, but, I mean, that's what you're asking us to do is to pick and choose. And we're... <laughs> And, I'm, and we have less information. I'm, I'm in trying to plan operation. I'm trying to say we do them all, and, and it's impossible. But I, I'm trying to say that we need to figure this out and spend the money. We have right. to. But the force main is a high priority because if that goes down, the catastrophic from that force main going down is going to devastate us because Narrows is the most important pump station. And to tell people behind Narrows shutting down because it just can't happen. It cannot happen. Uh, so those are, that's a real issue. Um, and so that's that's still being worked on. I, that, that's coming forward the next month you'll get that proposal so yeah they're they're they're, they're coming at us that proposal in time for town meeting i doubt it I, I can try to rush it but why we already i i, I doubt it but you'll definitely get it for but fall time for springtime meeting most assuredly so I, 10 million we're looking at we could very well put the article in for 10 million and by that time we come to town meeting we might have a priority of the three components and ask for a reduced amount on town meeting floor I mean, that's, you, that's as obvious. To trying to, yeah, that, trying that's to get something done in a week. You'll get a better chance of seeing Jesus than seeing $10 million so, so, so. come down to us. Why is he coming by? Why is he coming by? The five what? million, the five million is coming by. I'm that's just telling you, it isn't going to happen. Now, what other items are you asking for at fall town meeting? That's pretty much it. I, I, I haven't really looked, but this, there's some, I, I want to. Is there something else that was on the. Uh, I forget. Lining, we got lining. We're still lining pipes, aren't we? Are we? I, we? We've got. We're doing a, a section behind Smiths. We've already allocated the funds in this budget year. We're doing behind Smiths. Yes, we're doing 17 manholes. That's still going on. We haven't looked at on 
nonsense. Yet nonsense is as old as as we're him, and it's probably overly taxed. No, I got to tell you. To be frank with you, North Boulevard, that whole development off of North Boulevard Pump Station, Lava Street, they're, they're all in trouble. They're all clay pipes that are leaking like a sieve, and we got issues. Yeah, absolutely. 12th Street was an issue. We cleaned it up the best we can. We continue to clean it. We still, but that has to be lined. I, 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 um, can North Boulevard be lined? I'm sorry. Can North Boulevard be lined? Yes. We got to line it. Yes. It's all clay pipe that needs to be lined. Do you have yes. any guesstimate as to what that no. figure is at the moment? I can I can look have someone look into it, but I have no guesstimate. In my mind, that's a priority, but yeah, this exactly. is a priority too. That's, that's right. So that list, the development sitting here, we should uh, yeah, to sit here and have a a workshop with sleeves roll up and say, okay, here's what we got. Let's now let's put them in a list as a group. Maybe then it's because they're all very important they all need to be done and i and i mean that it, we estimated three years ago a hundred million dollars that's a real number now how do we do it i think that uh, and it's over 15 I, years i honestly think that the, the the selectmen should be part of this meet this this sit down have a meeting with the selectmen present to all of this and, and uh, the town administrator because this is this is huge this is ludicrous well, I, do we I, have a cost for c street yet I kind of half agree. No, it should be that. around 600000 We I have that money allocated. You, but I think we need to get our priority list together before we And then we go. But I we agree. we don't know what our priority. We're in such, we're in such disrepair. We, we, I mean, guy, we've guy got. I could put something together for us so we've got a start point that we don't have at the moment. And we can start wrestling with that. Right now, we're, we're shotgunning. So we can put, we'll put a list together. We can wrestle with and decide where we want to go, highest priorities, and we can move that forward. And then see where we go with it. That. Yeah, I mean, but is there the something? Is gonna work. Christ, my finances look great compared to this. <laughs> but is there something we can get done prior to September 5th to make fall town meeting for re capital request? We have to do an article for this, obviously. So there has to be an article for this. Project. If this is the if this is the one we choose as a high priority. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, say we, we line the pipes. That's my. My priority. I think onset's it, my priority right so now. So let's say we agree to do onset. That's fine. But remember, come next summer and we have the order issues, we've made a decision and that's it. We're not going to say, stop nickel and diamond it, let's do this. So that's the issue. That's the issue. We've got to pick and choose. Absolutely. But if something happens, we can't suck and guess ourselves a year from now. May I ask Russ a question? Of these three components, which one would you recommend to handle the Influence of additional water, rain, I and I. Yeah. Number three, the Number equaliza three. the additional equalization lagoon. And that equalization lagoon also has a less odor capacity component to it because it is partially treated. It it will. Fluid. It will help. It will help. I can't and, tell and you by yes. how much it's. Yeah, we don't know exactly how much we can put wood burning stoves all over the place and it still won't help much. So let me say this, it, you, you equate the secondary treatment to, to the rear equalization basin to as you do your aeration basins. Aeration basins are very, they have a musty smell more than they have a putrid smell. Mm -hmm. So you're going to trade a putrid smell for a musty smell. That's what you, because that, there's always a smell to everything. And maybe and so the that's, musty smell can be overcome by something better than, than putrid smell. Because it's very difficult to, yeah, it may. It's very difficult to overcome putrid. So if you go into a restaurant and go into a sink or a grease trap, you know, you're lucky to hold your stomach. And so there's a lot, that's just an order thing. So yes, um, I think if we had to do nothing else, we need to address the plant blowing up because we are spilling stuff over, it's going onto the ground, and one day we're gonna get nailed. We're gonna get nailed. And then it's gonna be no options. So that has to be addressed. We also have to address the odors. So I, that's why we put all three together and we can decide what you want to do. And that's why he come here to the board to get your authorization. We do it all, we do the funding for all of this possible, whatever you want to do, we'll do. Well, I think we should probably need to get the article in anyhow. I agree. And how, the, how it sifts out at the end, that's, we'll worry about it then. And, and what we have to do is, so I, that being said, then we should authorize GHD to write the grant proposal yes, i mean the, the rsrs application yes you don't have it done yet i actually have it 80 percent done i was looking to submit it tomorrow i was just waiting for the approval tonight so i i didn't want to start on it tomorrow i'd never get it done in time so i'm planning ahead a little bit for once in my life all right we're going to get a motion on 
proceeding with the funding of the, of the article. I make a motion that we uh, approve the PEF submission for the um, process improvements at the Wareham WPCF that was presented to us. No. More? No. No. That's fine. No, I'm just. She's thinking. I'm not sleeping. I'm just. I'm, I said thinking. I'm in, oh, I'm, I'm furious. But we have to be careful. We can't keep putting in submissions and walking away. Absolutely. So, so, so what are we doing it for in the first place? I mean. Ten million dollars? I'm not checking in it. I'm not. This is really looking at spending a million. Spending a million. Yeah. Well, that makes a difference. Okay. Well, I'll second it. Okay. In favor? Aye. Aye. Two. Aye. Uh, up to you, anything you want. Okay. We're off. So this is for the $10 million project with expected of a $1 million expenditure by town. Yes. Correct? Yes, and yes. Out of pocket costs to the town is a million. Okay. So we have to ask for all of it. We do, because yeah. remember they're lending us the money, and they just want to make sure that we're that the money is appropriate. So. Lend us then that, that lent money being lent is really a grant. It's a it's a, it's a loan. It's a low oh, to zero it's a interest. Zero percent we're expected loan. Expected payback. Does yes. have to be paid to, back. To pay them back, yeah. which means we need another. Years. The payback would have to come out of our expenses, yeah. our capital expenditures. Uh, yes, operations. remember, we did a $5 million loan, or actually we did $10 million. We're going to make payments back with the money we allocate presently for the million dollars we have in capital. We're going to use up, up to $500,000 of the money. It's going to be the same thing. So we have an annual bill, and we're going to take it out of allocated funds that we already have. So okay. that was, that's the goal. Okay. All right, moving along. Unfinished business here. Thank you, Russ. Russ thank you. you thank you. For, thank you. Good evening. And just if there's questions about anything, more than happy to come back anytime to. Thank, thank you, Russ. Vanilla thank you. Okay, sump pumps. Excuse me, I'm new to. Are we allowed to Well, technically no, but I'm going to take it. Okay. I'm going to. Oh, sorry, no, oh, that's all right. Uh, I was just going to say I'm going to allow it. Or are, we, are we on the list of unfinished business there, C Street Minor Speech, because that's, that's us here. That's and the who? Oh, you're not being, uh, Jimmy, negative, sorry. You're negative, not being negative, negative, negative. They put up a gate on Pinehurst and nobody's allowed in or out. So we don't know how you got here. <laughs> that's about Jimmy the gist of it. So, <laughs> So it, in my report, Mr. Chairman, I was going to talk about C Street. I don't know what, if that's what you're looking for. We'll, I haven't addressed it. But in my report, we'll talk about C Street, where we are, where we're going. Okay, let's go, let's go to that Let's guy. go, yeah. That's not here, yeah. Is that keeping these people? Still, okay, so C Street. So I, yeah, I wish I had known you. So C Street, um, where we are with C Street is, uh, I don't get in trouble here. Where we are with C Street is uh, throughout the summer, on a weekly basis, we have been checking fecal. And we have been checking the rim elevation to make sure she's not friendly sinking. Because as we know that there's a crack in the pipe, we wanted to make sure it was stabilized. Also wanted to make sure that it wasn't leaking. We've been in contact with the marine fisheries. They get the report, and, and we have the report as to the fecal content. And we compared it with Bessie so we'd have a, a control. Although Bessie was a lot higher than we were, that's really surprised us. But that's another story. Um, so now, what are we going to do? We're going to fix it. We are going to raise the elevation of the manhole either by replacing just the pipes and coring back into the manhole, um, or we're going to have to dig it and raise it to get the elevations proper to take out the cracks and breaks for the long term. So the problem is, logistically in Pinehurst, I have no room. You have no room. I've got to bring in huge equipment to do this job. 
So logistically is what we're looking at. Uh, this is going to go out to bid, invitation for bid. It's going to go out the end of September uh, or the uh, middle of September. We're going to go out, we're going to solicit all the uh, businesses and contracts in the area and let them bid on the cost of doing this. We estimate the cost to be around three to $400,000 to do this project. And then when that's done, we're going to line all the pipes they're all old ductile iron pipes. They're going to be reamed out and all lined. At the same time, all the manholes are going to be lined too. And then we're going to redo the covers. And so we're, our goal is that when we're completed, we have 50 to 70 years of life in that system. That's our long-term goal. So is that long-term? Um, sorry, they can't get you on the recording. You're going to so, have to come up and speak in the mics, please. Just so that everybody can hear. Miriam Yakabuchi, 64 Piners Drive. My concern is this was what we were told back in June, and granted this was first in the paper back in May, and not much has changed. Um, we're concerned, yes, you have a plan, but are we talking this isn't going to be completed, this whole plan, for like 10 years down the road now? Once we start, we're going to complete it to end. So I can three months, four months. The biggest problem for me is while I'm doing this, how are you going to get around? That's my logistics. I'll figure it out. I'll walk. Okay. I'll and walk that's right. my car down the street. And so that's what we're figuring out. Because when we get to the IFP, the, engine, the, the construction company is going to come in and they say, here's what we have to do beginning to end. Here's guys, what I need for room. Guys, here's what's logistically do it. The reason nothing has happened up to this point is we were concerned about the influx of summer residents. Summer residents. Right. Well, a lot of us are year-rounders in that neighborhood. That. Uh, but there's a lot of summer residents down there, and we were looking to try to be able to do this when the volume of people is lower, so we inconvenience fewer people and are able to get equipment in and out of there with less disruption. Okay, well, in the area. That's why it's a September thing, and as soon as we get the bids finalized, we're going to go. Head down so the there. town's so, already approved this money? Yes. Yes, it's, yeah. it's already, we already have the money in the bank. So it's going to go quick the as soon as the bids are in. That's right. Okay, the, the town did not need to approve the money. It. It's already in our budget. We okay. allocated the money so for it. So is like the EPA and the DEP and Buzz's Bay Coalition all involved in this whole process? Yeah. The DEP is because we have to submit EPA the DEP. Is. We have to, more than DEP, the Marine Fisheries, because they control that. So there's a lot. Yeah, every every agency is involved. We're involved. And the logistics of it is kind of complicated because I have to answer to fire and, and, and all that. So everybody, so we're trying to satisfy everybody. And in this bid process, all those things will be satisfied. When we're done, we're going to go and get it done. We're just going to will it and get it done. Okay. That's the goal. We're, we're concerned. We haven't, no, we be. haven't been able to swim in that water. There's a terrible odor. The animal life in the water is no longer like it's a safety hazard. Well, let me say this to you because I talked to marine fisheries. That bay has been in trouble for years because of the storm drains. They never allowed swimming there. They, it's, that's been well, a. We've always swam. Well, I'm not saying you can't it's swim. What I'm saying, and if you, you can swim because the fecal's not there, you can swim. But this has been on the list of the marine fishery for many years. Matter of fact, when I told them I was going to do fecal tests, they said, well, you really don't have to but I'm doing them. So talk to the marine fisheries. This has been an issue for years. Nothing new. Mira Cove is one, how did, there's no shellfish in there. It hasn't been for years. So all that stuff is not something that we inherited, that we're inheriting, but it's not, I, and I, we truly don't believe it's from the sewer because the numbers don't show that. It's an ongoing, and they believe that it's the storm water that is nailing that bay. That, you can talk to them yourselves for that verification. Because when I did my investigation, they said, oh no, don't, here's what's going on there. I'm still going to do this, I said to them. We're still going to do it because for our satisfaction, we're going to do what we need to do. But they've already made those determinations. They're nothing new. You can so call them yourselves. That, uh, you're going to have to come up to the mic, please. Yeah, I, just have the, I feel like there's a few layers to all of this, and we appreciate you coming to the association. But I have a property right on Maricove in front of where this manhole is sticking up, which has stakes and yellow tape around it. Sea Street. It. Well, yes, but it, I'm to the right of it, but it's in front of C Street. Okay. Um, there is an odor, strong odor, that is not low tide. So I do have concerns about what is happening in the water, whether it's sewer, mm -hmm. fisheries. It's a problem. I'm not the only one. I've lived there all my life. I know what low tide smells like versus something else. Yeah. That's a concern. Um, what the plan actually is you keep we keep saying not you I don't want it to be all about you but we keep saying there's a plan what is it are we dewatering the cove are we bringing in are we doing the sill fence whatever that I, like, I won't what? know until the contract see that's what the part of the bid process so we're gonna the contracts will come in they'll walk it 
we still have to do some borings to make sure what the stability of the grounds are. Then they will give us their different types of approaches. The goal we have is to fix the manhole. Does that mean we raise it? Does that mean we can bore into it? And if that's the case, we do have to put shoring around because you can't dig into the ground down eight feet without some type of shoring. So there will be some shoring, that's for sure. You just can't dig a hole without guaranteeing the bank. So all that stuff, but guy, I can't her, give her you. question is, what's the plan? The plan what? from our standpoint, Right. From the, the sewer department standpoint, is to repair the manholes and the pipes and line the pipes. Okay. That's it. And what's the time? For, but in the meantime, we have this. I mean, I understand there's other issues, but we have this manhole that's up above. There's caution tape. The seawall was broken, which I understand you said that you we'll fix it. Yeah. That's a whole other thing because the association owns the seawall, so the mm -hmm. president's got to get involved. There's, I feel like there's layers, the but the most important thing to us was the quality of the water and these numbers. And well, the, I understand. The, see, the quality of the water, that's going to be another story by itself. That's not something that we can address, but we have control over. We have control over what's happening, i.e., the pipe, the, the sewer. Yeah, the sewer end of it. Right, which, but I'm saying which is, because of the sewer issue, I feel like that there's, you know, all of a sudden it, there's this odor. It could be, you could be correct, and I'm not disputing that. Okay. But I don't know. All I can go by at the moment is what Guy has said with the testing that he's done uh -huh. with the marine fisheries and all, and what they've got to say. Now, how that all comes together and forms, I don't know. From our standpoint, what we're looking at right now is to repair that manhole, repair the other ones, line the pipes so that there won't be any future problems or potential problems through there. Uh, as far as the water quality, you know, if it's something that has happened because of, of us, you know, then we'll do whatever is necessary to try to correct it. However, comma, at this point, I don't know that it's us. I don't. We may have contributed some. I don't know. I think we need more more input from the people that that say that the cove is not good. You couldn't swim in it, or, or these other things. I, I didn't know that. I'm yeah, hearing it now for the first time. So, right. uh, yeah, I've only just yeah. There's so, no signs that says ahead. it's not swimmable. Yeah. Your name? I, Can you John Wanigan from uh, C Street. Before you go, may I have? Will you please your write name. your name down so we can put it in the in the uh, minutes and this yeah and and, and the same you for you the I need okay. your oh, print yeah. so I can read it I never do this John go ahead just the name is enough I, I just want to say I, I've been kind of staying on top of this I remember speaking with you the first day you came down yeah. and you, you came down yourselves and you, you thought it was I remember you telling me it's gonna be like 10 days to two weeks well and that's be what all we thought up. at that time but, since, but honestly, that, since that day, when you just went out there with the skid steer and started digging, that's when the smell came. That's, we've had a bad smell all summer. Since whatever took place, I don't know if the ground was shifted because of the equipment or something underneath it. And there's been a stink all summer. You can't even sit out in your deck sometimes, right. depending on which way the wind's blowing. From my own past experience on that kind of thing, not down there, but my guess is going to be it's because it got dug down and the well, stuff the, underneath got exposed. The water. It nothing to do with the sewer, though. The water around the manhole cover is sewer water. And anybody look, walks down there, looks at it, and sees it, it, it you can tell the difference between that water and, and sea water. Mm -hmm. And it's, 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 it's a gray, oily looking matter. It's not sea water. It's been a problem, and it's, it's getting worse. Now, I know there's a financial problem. We, we heard it here tonight. And there's a, there's a big monetary problem for the sewer with all the projects they got. I get it. But if we can establish that that thing is broken and leaking, does that qualify us for some federal funds to clean up the area? Would that put us in a federal emergency situation to get money to fix it properly and clean it up? Because well, we believe I, it's... We have a state emergency to fix it. 
there's no funding, but the state gives emergency to fix it. So right. that means that we can circumvent some bid out and some bidding bidding issues. The, the there's a cover on that manhole, and if yeah. you go down four feet, there's another cover. I understand. And that. so it's yeah. double covered, and there's no water coming out. That's according to the engineers and the people are there. So I, I that's as much as I can tell you. But we've got okay. double covers there. The top has been bolted, bottom has been sealed, so we don't see any leaking. So Speaking because the manhole doesn't get that high, sir. The so, water goes over that manhole. I understand that, but the, you're talking about the sewer coming out. The yeah. sewer's down, the manhole's down eight feet. Sewer's down eight feet. So we would have to surcharge the entire eight feet to come out the cover, and that's not happening. Well, there's been neighbors. Uh, I'm not there year round, but I, I own the house there. And the neighbor to the right of me said she has seen it in the, in the last couple of years bubbling on certain days. It bubbles up. So there's, there was, this is prior to you raising it, but there's been something coming out of there because she's seen it. Well, um, the just to be clear, the raisin it didn't change the elevation know, of the inner it, it cover. Change, I understand the inner that. cover's still there, still I, doing its thing. I understand it. So, but whatever was holding the first cover in place obviously wasn't holding back the flow or the amount of pressure that was coming out It is. There. It was bolted down. So now, one of the neighbors brought a point to me the other day. There's been problems in the past where the sewer has had to come out and pump people's houses or pump the lines because they get plugged up like once a month they said there used to be somebody over somewhere around Pinehurst that would be backed up and they'd have to snake their drain or whatever but since this has happened there's been no backups down there which to me is an indication that it's got to be going someplace if it's not backing up anymore is it leaking out where, where does what it we go? did is to, to answer your question uh, the best I can we had cleaned every single line we didn't just hit C Street every manhole has been dug up so if we're disturbing the soil, every single manhole along that beach has been dug up. They've all been raised, every single one of them. The line between Ross Street and C Street was plugged with grease. There's yep. a major grease problem in Pinehurst, even above. So we took out tons of grease on, on, on C, from Ross to C Street, also from C Street to Pinehurst Street, and from Pinehurst Street to uh, uh, Francis, Francisco uh, Franconia. Franconia. All right, we moved all this grease. So yes, it's gonna flow better because that pipe that was originally a 10 inch got down to about a six inch and now it's back up to a 10 inch. So that's been done too, so the flow should be better. There's just a lot of concerns, like some of the other neighbors idea. addressed. And the water testing, we've been hearing they've been doing it. We've never heard the results of the water testing. Well, I said something, but well, I'll get that. Yeah, we when I get back from vacation, the next week I... Just I'm sure you can have a little bit of fecal count. Less than 100, less. less than 100. It, so we can see that. Yeah, just, less than 100. Just so we understand what's going on here. I spoke to Ms. Slavin a few weeks ago because when they were coming down to test the water, they weren't testing it anywhere near the break. They were testing it on an incoming tide, which is gonna be clean water. It's not gonna be dirty because it's clean, it's coming in. And they were testing it at the end of Ross. In the Hold I'll on, give let, the let me finish. They were testing it at the end of Ross and not at the end of C Street where the break was. So we've, we've so, done C Street, Ross Street, low tide, high they, tide. They weren't doing. Selected. They weren't doing C Street. We have. I was watching them. Well, so maybe on I went down day. the Ross, and I brought them down to C Street and said, "You got to test it over there where the break is." And the, the guy was like, "Ooh, good! I got to go in there," because he saw the mess. So he pulled out a jar that was disgusting looking. The water they took off of there it came right off the top. We never heard the results of that test. The show didn't look good. You haven't. So we do Ross, we do uh, we do Pine uh, C Street. We also do the end of the one up. I think it's War Ave. And then we do um, we do uh, Bessie Park as a test. So they're all done. Every single one of them because we're concerned about the entire miracle. I understand that, but they things. weren't. But I'm telling you, I, I was there. You weren't. They weren't testing at the end of C. They'd come down C Street. They'd park on C Street, and they'd walk over to Ross and go start taking samples. Walk back, get in their truck and drive away. So the results I have is for all of them. So, and I'll share that and, and I have, so they're all, so, so they all I directed them to that, but I haven't heard any results on what no, that water looked like. They're all less than 100, milli 100 parts per million, or they, colonies, you allow it up to 100 right. colonies. They're all less than 100 colonies per, per 100 mil. They're all. Who does the actual test? What's it's done that? at the plant at our certified lab. Okay. We're just, you know, we're concerned with, our quality of life trying to sit out on our decks and you get this awful odor that, like I said, it depends on which way the wind's blowing and we're kind of unsure of what's going. We've heard several versions of what might happen, but there's been no concrete plan of what's going to be done. 
that we, we, we delayed everything to the end of the summer because of the situation we have with the, with the, with the traffic and the uh, residents. We had said that months ago hey, that we'd do no. this later, we, and that's why we said we but monitored We, don't, we don't know sure. what the plan is yet, correct? We don't either. We know what the plan is to fix it, but we don't know what the specifics of it yet. So we don't know if they're going to dig up the pipes? So we'll find out. When we, I, I'll have so that. we don't know what the cost of it is, really. Well, we, we estimated the cost to be as high as $600,000, maybe a little less, because we went out, when we do, when you're doing a job, you may go get a few quotes, you get what we call a, a, a budgetary quote. Yep. It's not refined, so usually budgetary quotes are high, so they come in at $600,000. We believe it's going to be less, but we've allocated $600,000 because those are the budgetary bids. Now, I, I talked to the Department of Marine Fisheries mm -hmm. about the water testing, and they're only concerned with levels that for shellfish, and that's their concern. He said, we don't test for human or fecal. Yeah, we do, we do fecal. So he said that area, that the word he uses, always tested hot, he said. It is. And I said, is, is it possible that it's tested hot because we've had these leaking sewer pipes on the ground, and they've been attributing it to the, to the runoff from the storm drains when in fact it's been testing hot because we got broken sewer pipes. We don't know. It's been there since, I don't know when, 78, 88, whatever, oh, we don't know. Yeah. So now we discovered it this year, we're, we're addressing it. We right. had no our knowledge of it. As I said earlier, all of a sudden it becomes a priority. It was never on our radar. Yeah. This year it became a priority, so we're trying to address the best we can to get it rectified and resolved. Well, hopefully, hopefully by mid-September you'll see activity down there and we'll get something going yeah, on. Yeah, we, I hope you don't. I hope we can get through it before that. Yeah. Well, it's, we, we're definitely going to address it. We're definitely going to do it. There's no fans and buts about it. And we just delayed it because of, 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 the, of the timing. I just have one. Thing. Sure. Uh, one question. The name? I'll put, my name is Bill Manguso. We're at 70 Pioneers Drive, right on the other side of okay. C Street, uh, right on Blue Jay. Um, we have been in a four year. Um, effort uh, to get our seawall on Cottage Street replaced. And we had just won uh, approval uh, to get that done from the town. The town pushed over the wall, snow plowing, and it's been four years. And so that's about to happen. So I'm, I'm telling you the, uh, that is going to happen. And if you're going to build a road across or access for equipment, should we wait to do that uh, in the next month? I, I, I would suggest you, you move ahead your plans. If we have to do something foolish like that, then it's our responsibility to repair it. It'll be on us. But uh, we try to get everything from C Street and work, walk around the beaches, and the tides become very, very important to us. Um, to, okay. be, to be perfectly um, uh, clear, I have not seen the bid packages. I don't know what we're going to do. We're going to bring some contractors. Our goal is to do A, B, C, D. They're going to say, we're bidding on A, B, C, D, and here's how we're doing it, and there's a cost to do that. And so, so I can be more get, specific if we get our that. wall done, and then you use a cottage to bring in equipment and something happens. We're responsible. Excellent. And one other point. Uh, talking about the discussion earlier tonight, about the big problems that we have, um, I'm glad you went, you voted to bring that to town meeting as a resident of this town. I think what we need is leadership on this because this problem is not going away. And, um, you know, I know this, it's terrible money we want, but we have to pay the piper soon enough. And I'd rather just try to do as much as we can because uh, I can't imagine anything more important for well, the success of this town going forward. Well, we can't either, particularly with the water, I mean, with the amount of pipes that so are located we, with the water. Of, we we just know, don't want. Let's not be fearful, because we have to. We have to do it. Yep. Yep. Thank Maine, you. Please. You forgot me. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, guy. Do you have anything else? No, I, I uh, gosh. Um, I gave you just a piece of paper. I, we talked about sump pumps, um, and we're doing all we can. I just wanted, I'm going to address it briefly. Okay, this is a letter from thank Larry you. Perkins. Thank oh, thank you. you. Thank you. Um, through um, uh, Kelly Tyler, who is with the DEP. And this is talking about tying sump pumps into storm drains. There's grant money available to do that research. 
And so we're thinking of applying for a grant just to do the research, what the viability is, the cost, and have some hard, concrete answers uh, funded through grant money. So I just wanted to share it with you, and we'll move forward on, when I get more information. On the sump pumps, doing what with them? Tying them into the storm drains. Oh, okay, okay. Um, wait, what yeah. about 4M, 4SM, yeah, 4F? So we're going to do that. This, this, what this is all about. This really? is. I got this from the DEP, and they're saying this grant money to address the issue. Good. Sump pump's an issue, so I think we should at least look into it. Yep. Okay, speaking of sump pumps and the issue, I spoke with uh, Mr. Bowen uh, on the sump pump issue, and we discussed notifying a section of, let's say, Swift Beach for lack of another one at the moment. That's uh, of the sump pump mm -hmm. requirement, etc. The next rainstorm we have is to have a couple of you guys go down there with the camera equipment and camera the lines and determine where sump pumps are active so that we can pinpoint them. Once we pinpointed them, go to those particular people, tell them they've got to uh, get rid of them. The next rainstorm, recheck that. If they haven't gotten rid of them, then they get fined. Okay. Noisily. Normally after a, rain, a heavy rainstorm, say something of an inch or so, how long does it take for the sump pumps to become activated because of rainwater? Um, a, day, a, a, day, a day or two before it, a day or so because yeah, so we what happens is we get the rains and we get the flow from the leakage and then all of a sudden the, the flow just continue to get higher and higher as the sump pumps so it goes it, down into it would it be something that we'd wait for a rainstorm of an inch so I, I don't that's a good question I would at least an inch because it's hundred thousand gallons mentioned to get some type of effective look mm -hmm. at it. I mean I, I would suggest that and I'd also suggest to do it the day of day after and maybe a couple days after to get the actual so we can capture the fullness of it. Because we may go out there and don't see much, but a day later it's, it's horrendous. And so I, I just think that so, we need to yeah. get to maximize the flow to make sure we get it. So, yeah. But if we take, say, two, two lines at a time, how long does it take to sit to film a camera goes in filming all the time so we would have to legitimately just sit by each lateral for a designated amount of time and just keep moving along to oh there's one and, and record it so I, I i don't have an answer but wait i don't want to we can't really do all of swiss speech no at one time so he we, said a neighbor he said his, when he set up pick a pick section a, pick a neighborhood that's pick all. a section and, and just do that section if we take and find one or two or three or whatever it is yep. we notify they monitor. them to, to do it they don't disconnect we catch them again they get fined and then we put it in the paper that this is what's happened and we make yeah. a lot of noise about it, a lot of publicity about it, so that the word gets out to others. Is there a particular it, section that's more of a issue than other sections of Swift Speech or Swift Nick? They're wrong. Or Aunt's, it's a, it's Cam, a, I got major. Or Briarwood? Briarwood. I mean, they're, they're everywhere. We can pick, pick we'll pick one. Um, say, anything a, along the water? Get, got a place to, Remember, uh, our problem is every one of our pipes along the water are deep. They're all in water. Because yeah. and, or, some, or some variation well, thereof. Do we you know what I mean? And you look at you look at our Briarwood. That's brand new. It's leaking. We've got leakers there. That's plastic, brand new pipe, relative, right? It's been they here since 2029, 20, 2010. But they've got bad water. That's uh, that's an issue that's been going on forever. So I mean, it's one of those things. Do we take a small area like Briarwood? Do we take Swiss Nick? Do we take? We don't care. We don't care. Take Onset. Onset's leaking like a sieve. We got the, 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 yeah, but do we have a lot of sump pumps in Onset? It takes two streets. We got, some, we got a lot of sump pumps down Main Street Wareham. They're all pumping. Yeah. Okay, so if we find... So, <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't make any difference. If we take How many streets, streets do you anywhere. want to do at one time? Do What's doable? Three. We'll just take a section, do some streets. Three. Okay. Just figure so it out. After a rainstorm of at least an inch, we would go out there on the second day... And the third day after the storm? I would suggest, I would say second, second and third and day. third. Whatever day he determines is most just, apropos just to it. do it. And then you come back to us with addresses of where we have a sump pump, proof of a sump pump working, 
we send out registered letters saying you've got to We've already, yeah, we, to those I'm just looking yeah. at the process. Send registered letters saying you've got to undo your sump pump. Don't have an option for you yet, but you've got to undo it. Well, you, can Next, do it. you can give them the option of they have to put in a dry well. But yeah, yeah, we can tell that. The, yeah, I don't put in a can't direct well. it, but yes, put in a dry well. Or, well but someone says put it out in your put it out on your lawn, lawn and let it go down a. And they've done that, and people are doing down, that. Yeah. It, it goes to your neighbors, it goes to the street, and then the winter they because the what I've been hearing That's from people others is but that I'm in just, the winter it becomes an issue because the roads are wet, they freeze, I, and I, I, it, I just honestly I it cannot it. go yeah. down right, right out my backyard. Yeah. Right out okay. my so I'm just yard. trying to finish the process. You send out a register letter saying you have X amount of days to set your sump pump to outside of sewer line, right? The next major one inch rainstorm, we view and tape the camera the same sections on the second and third day after a rainstorm. For those that have not disconnected from sewer, we send them a fine. A fine. Period. And and I believe because of a recent passing of a bylaw, we can put that fine directly on their tax bill. So we have to say, here's your original letter. If you don't do it, your fine will be X, Y, Z. I mean, it, it, to me, is that the process we're talking about? Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to get it in the minutes well, that simple. this is the process. Okay. Trying to keep it simple. Stone Path, we're playing with them still. They haven't. They haven't given you anything, numbers-wise. Stone Path. No, they, we have the numbers. That I, okay. I have got nothing from them, and I. We'll, we'll, okay, I have talked with Bob Ethia, and thank you for sending that notification okay. list to him. Uh, I also talked with. Uh, Rich Bowen, on uh, what happens when Bob approaches a, <laughs> I love the first one on the list. Yeah, it's just, uh, <laughs> okay, anyhow, uh, I asked him uh, what the process is from there. He said, leave it up to the Board of Health. They've got the enforcement authority. They can do it. And we're out of it, basically, at this point. I mean, I think we, I would stay in touch with Bob relative to which ones he's contacted when so we would have some idea of what or what not to expect okay. coming forward. Okay. Uh, Could we get a list that you gave Ethier? No, you can't have it. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, EDU rates are still the same as they were. So I, you know, I got to tell you a quick story on that, which really I found very, very crazy, to be frank. Um, I, I was driving over the Bourne Bridge talking to Mike. He called me. I went over the Bourne Bridge yesterday, and I get a call from Mike. Hey, how you doing? Ty Bond about EDU. And a truck coming across takes off my mirror. Jesus. <laughs> It, it blew me all of a sudden. It's like, bam! And I'm like, what? A truck hit my mirror, bent it down, threw out the glass. It was crazy. Smashed the backside of it. Anyways, Mike well, said. You're lucky you didn't lose control and hit something else. I got it. When I started thinking about it and saying, yes, if wow. I had freaked out and there's bumper to bumper, or I mean, I should say bumper, it was bumper to bumper, but it's moving around 30, 40 miles an hour, mm -hmm. all lanes. Yeah. If I had freaked and I had just deviated from my lane, it could have been. I was You're after the fact. The yeah, yeah, after the fact. The then of course or, I. Or it could have disconnected and hit a car. It well, the beauty of it is because it, it, it they they bend in anyway, so it kind of threw it in, smashed it, smashed the entire thing, and it, it was hanging by a wire because it has a you know all of, but and that's your it was bizarre. Town, your truck or town truck? My truck. Whoa, and those things aren't cheap. No, 350 bucks. My, my truck while I was on town business. But anyways, so Mike said that he would, he would be willing to come and talk with you. And I said, I don't know what the, what the benefit is. He says, Guy, I've said all along, you can't do water. It's a waste of time. So anyways, I said, Mike, let me tell the board. We've exasperated this. I will talk to the board. If they choose to have you come in, then you can come in. Other than that, let's just 
but we're kind of, so I want to throw that out there. Okay, he's supposed to submit a final report to us. Will he be doing that? He can do that. Yeah, He'll do that. So, we so I'll just tell him, submit a final report, and then we can take it from there. Fine. Okay. Okay. Um, Go ahead, new business. EDU, EDU rates. We, when we did the increase, we said X percent of the increase would go toward capital? Yeah. Correct? Yeah. Do we know if that's being done from accounting point of view? I don't. I, I just knew that when I looked at numbers, it was like 20, 20, 20% or $30,000 a year. It wasn't a whole lot of money. So it's in content within our capital accounts right. and we just allocate the funds. New business, Donna. Anything? New business. I make a motion that we adjourn. <laughs> Second. Wow. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. Next meeting is September 12th. Uh, thank you all for oh, watching. Oh, sorry. Don't we have to meet before September 5th? We're going to get an article get in. Get that article in. Probably going to have to meet next week. Maybe wiser or, or just, yeah, because we're two weeks left in August. And then we're right into Labor Day. I think you're going to have to meet next week. Yeah. But you can let me know. I'm <laughs> on my way. 22nd? 22nd? <laughs> 20 22nd. Of August. August 22nd? Okay. Get us a room. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Okay. Okay, August 22nd. We're going to meet at the Narrows. <laughs> right at the bar, I hope. Of course. Well, and is really there a choice? The only, the only no. topic on there will be uh, town meeting articles. Yes. That's it. Because wasn't there something else of capital planning that there was another item coming before on? Yeah, that's, but that's kind of half ass covered underneath this uh, grant. Oh, this okay. uh, S half S S equalization. Half-ass uh, under. Good. Yeah. yeah. Did we it's under the grant. We, oh, uh, we did. We did vote to adjourn. We did. We're off, aren't we, Bob? <laughs>